The name of this session is Taking Society's Pulse in Real Time. We have four 10 minute talks and probably a 20 or 30 minute conversation after that. Um, so we'll hold questions to the end. We'll let these guys do their, their 10 minutes. Um, and then we'll hopefully have an engaging discussion that integrates some of the main ideas, synthesizes some of them from, uh, from the talk. So first we have Ben Lewis, then we have uh, Todd Mostak from MIT, uh, Jeff Blossom from the Center for Geograph Analysis here, and then we have what do you, Chris, Chris Tucker from Map Story sure. and other things. Other things. And other things. So <laughs> without further ado, take it away, Ben. Thank you. <coughs> okay. I'm going to tell you about a project that we've been working on for the last year or so, closely to uh, CGA, closely together with Todd Mostock, who you're going to hear from right after me. Our angle on the project is TweetMap, and uh, TweetMap runs in WorldMap, WorldMap's uh, online collaborative platform to let anybody in the world share spatial data. TweetMap is uh, the beginnings of, uh, of a big data platform for geospatial, and as you'll hear from Todd, uh, it does other things as well, um, provides interactive analytics on the fly against very large spatial data sets, something that the GIS world has been bumping its head against for a while, on the fly queries against big stuff. And we see this both as an interesting way of providing visualization and analytics against specific data sets and layers, but also as a way to think about scaling traditional GIS visualizations. WorldMap itself is acquiring a lot of data, and it's, it's getting a lot of traffic. And so we're looking for ways of scaling that. You know, traditionally, we think about using so Amazon Cloud-like approaches, but this provides other ways of parallelizing, which are interesting to think about. World map, just a quick side, Laura's idea is to lower barriers for researchers who want to use geospatial. It's web-based. We, we're hosting it on Amazon. The tweet map application is actually hosted on a single, not very large server right across the street, but it's got two GPU, uh, actually four GPU cards on it. Cheap commodity gamer cards, basically, are what turn that into a little supercomputer. World Map's open source uh, and available to the world. Here's some quick stats on it. In the last year and a half, uh, this many uh, registered users and visitors. So, so um, TweetMap is sitting really as just a, a, a layer within this broader system. And uh, one of the exciting things about that is that, so just traffic by city. World Map's getting uh, about a quarter of its traffic is coming from Cambridge and Boston and the rest from around the world. The exciting thing about bringing something like TweetMap into WorldMap is that not only do we get to start bringing world uh, analytics into WorldMap, which it's currently very light on, but we can start overlaying these traditional layers uh, with big data sets and uh, really adding, uh, I think, um, potential incredible new value to, to, to both. We're using the word real time. This is quite a buzzword. It can mean lots of things. We're meaning it to describe a characteristic of MAPD. It's not implemented now in, in TweetMap, though uh, it has been. It's a little, it's, it's going to be there sometime soon. Where, say, all 600 million tweets per day uh, flow directly into the database on the fly. Tweet in the field ends up on tweet map, you know, a second after it's tweeted anywhere in the world. That's the kind of thing that MAPD uh, can do. And the other thing we mean by real time is the ability to allow a human being to explore a very large data set without dumbing it down, without uh, necessarily uh, biasing it by sampling it, literally querying that big data on the fly interactively. And we're uh, talk calling that real time uh, an, uh, interactive. Uh, analysis. Key features of MAPD, uh, real-time access to billions of records, visualization. In this case, against, so you can do key, sort of faceted queries, keyword, geography, and time, simultaneous queries. And uh, it's open source and runs on very cheap hardware. So uh, 
a new kind of tool for a new kind of media. Um, I was just thinking, we were meeting with some journalists the other day uh, who pointed out that uh, uh, Twitter has, has become sort of the first draft news source for, for journalists. And um, you know, it reminded me of a, of a, a thing that's common said, that the, the, the journalists write the first draft of history. And in, if that's true, then TweetMap is really potentially a very powerful tool for helping people start to explore what uh, history might become. One way to think about TweetMap, in the, and this is just this map itself, which is, at the moment, this is just one chunk of tweets, and they're not even that recent. This is uh, about 125 million tweets from December. Okay, these are going to be updated fairly soon to be, uh, I think, ultimately, well, I'll let Todd talk about that. But this, this represents 5 million users here. So this is 5 million human sensors represented on this map. Another way to think about them. What happens when you type a keyword, type a word against all those tweets? You see patterns. So here's snow. And uh, you also see a histogram. So this is across the extent that I've just searched. I have this tweet filter closed so you can't see, but I basically just searched against December. And I can, zoom, I can quickly uh, see patterns in data, and I can zoom into both of these devices. That my, yeah. So uh, a very just quick example. Here, here's a quick animation of snow created just by simply clicking on the, on the next button. So this could be back end, you know, made a nice smooth video, which Todd's done some of, but that's, that gives you a sense of how fast it is. So that was just me clicking on the button, on the next button. I'm incrementing by hour, and I'm incrementing 1227 at this time, four, you know, from 3 to 4 o'clock, and I'm just going ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk against 125 million features, and I'm visualizing them by time, space, and keyword. Rain. That's rain in Arabic. Rain so, in Saudi Arabia? Well, it doesn't rain very much in Saudi Arabia, which is why they're talking about it. I learned this, actually. We were in Jeddah fairly uh, recently, and I, I brought this up, and I thought, I thought I had found a really great way of talking, you know, talking about Twitter and demoing it, thinking that there had been rain recently. But in fact, there hadn't been rain there had been talk about rain, and that generated incredible anxiety because two years ago there had been rain, and that had led to terrible flooding. Here's Duncan, as in Dunkin' Donuts. That's y'all. That's sick. Clearly, language, you know, one to search sick, one would ideally pass uh, it to the system in many languages, so this is very biased. There's Infermo, and now you see South America, Central America lighting up as they should have before. That's Newtown Massacre. There's the massacre. And uh, of course, you can zoom in. You know, you can zoom in and click on these tweets. So here we've got all 125 million tweets. We're going to type in earthquake. We're going to see where the earthquakes are. They're in the Spots you might expect them. Now we're going to zoom in on Southern California. We're going to click. We're going to see people talking about the earthquakes at the time they're happening here. I feel an earthquake, I feel, and there's a fair amount of slang, as you can see. Um, and now we're going to bring in USGS real-time earthquake layer. So that's the power of bringing these together. You can bring in other layers, overlay them. This is uh, what USGS is saying about that earthquake at that time. And uh, we can bring in other things like here's uh, here's geology, and uh, we can. It's actually this happens to be a global geology map, so this could be uh, applied elsewhere. Um, but here, if we look closely, and I go over it really quickly, but um, but the tweets actually line up with the actual faults in the geologic map, which is really cool. And now we're going to just uh, we're just going to go through hour by uh, no this is minute by minute right before an earthquake. Here's green, 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 and now bang, red, red, orange. Um, and so you get the idea. Real-time tweet uh, streaming is uh, in the works. I'll let Todd talk about that. 
Just a thought from a video I saw recently, Robert Kirkpatrick of UN Global Pulse, talking about the value of big data for getting information to policymakers a lot faster than the old three to five year plans. And he looks at things like cell phone and, and Twitter data to make that possible. Lots of kinds of big data out there, all kinds of crazily interesting information that can be uh, discerned from things like cell phone data. Oh, and uh, we've got a mobile app for world map. Uh, tweet map doesn't work on it yet, but that's our picture of what it's going to look like. So you could be out in the field and see the patterns of what people around you are talking about now or in the past. Kind of fun.